It is such a pleasure for me to be able to speak to all of you gathered at the second annual One Voice International Women's Conference. I only wish I could be with you in person. I would like to thank the voice of the Libyan women for your invitation to be part of this event. But even more, I want to thank all the amazing civil society organizations for the extraordinary work you have been doing since the revolution in giving voice to Libyan women who are key to the success of the new Libya. And I would be remiss not to thank those of you with whom I have personally met over the last many months. Today, women are on the front lines of change around the globe, and they are changing the world by taking on the hardest issues, including those of war and peace in the hardest of environments. Women and men together have led the revolutions that brought the promise of democracy and dignity in their countries. Unfortunately, women are too often viewed as victims, not as powerful agents of change that you are. It is true of women all over the world, from Sri Lanka to Colombia, and it is without question true of all of you in Libya. You are leaders and you are doing the hard work of building a new future for your country. It will not be easy, you know that. Despite women's vital role in the revolution and the efforts of so many like you, women were largely shut out of the transitional process after the liberation. There are even naysayers who question whether Libya is ready for women in power. Well, the people of Libya sent them a resounding message when they elected 33 women to the National Congress. I was so heartened to learn that these same women have come together to form a cross-party women's bloc dedicated to playing a positive role. These women have put democracy and spreading prosperity and bringing stability to your country over party, over region, over ideology. Women's voices are just as vital in matters of national government, governance and security as are those of men. Including women is the right thing to do. It is also the smart thing to do. Including women and in the experiences, talents and perspectives that women bring to conflict prevention the promotion of justice, the development of the economy is absolutely essential to a peaceful, stable, and democratic Libya. In December of 2011, President Obama launched the first ever U.S. National Action Plan on Women, Peace, and Security. It lays out a comprehensive roadmap to accelerate and institutionalize efforts across the United States government so that we can do a better job of working to advance women's participation in making and keeping peace. Our National Action Plan represents a fundamental change in how we will approach our diplomatic, military, and development support to women in areas of conflict and post-conflict by ensuring that women's perspectives and considerations of gender are always part of how the United States approaches peace processes, conflict prevention, the protection of civilians, human, humanitarian assistance, and post-conflict reconstruction. We are seeking to better engage to ensure the protection of and empower women and girls around the world. And we recognize, as you do, that the rule of law, the rule of law for all, is essential to these efforts. Promoting an independent judiciary, transitional justice, and establishing the rule of law are critical components to the success of a new Libya. We cannot wait for law enforcement to be ready to address gender-based violence. Because it's, if Libya is not secure for women, it is truly not secure. Before he left Washington, Ambassador Chris Stevens and I had a discussion 
about the present and future of Libya. He spoke passionately of his hopes and the challenges he saw. He told me of the Libyan women he knew personally who had risked everything in the revolution. He said the strength and determination of the Libyan women he had met with and those with whom he had worked gave him great optimism for Libya's future. He loved your country. In fact, our National Action Plan has a focus on a number of countries, and last summer he strongly advocated for Libya to be included in those priority countries. He understood that the new partnership between our two countries must be built on a firm foundation that is inclusive, inclusive of everyone. We must work together to live up to his hopes and to your dreams. In some post-revolutionary countries, women are being marginalized, their rights threatened, and their progress threatened. I know you will not let that happen in Libya. You will stay engaged, and the international community will stand with you. You are entering into one of the most important stages of your country's transition to democracy the writing of the Constitution. The voices of the Libyan women, your voices, must be heard. Women's rights are human rights, and every woman has the right to live up to her God-given potential. The Constitution must protect women's equal rights. You are making progress on this road, but our journey together is far from over. You are the change makers. You are truly making a difference. The courage and commitment of Libyan women is an inspiration to everyone around the world. During the revolution, when it was ongoing, one of your sisters met with me, and she expressed supreme confidence that the forces of freedom would win. She said the mask of fear had been lifted from the women of Libya Tunisia, Egypt, Yemen, Syria. Once lifted, she said, it would never go back, no matter how hard the road ahead was. Know that we will do all we can to support you in that hard work of securing a just, peaceful, and prosperous Libya. We wish Godspeed to each and every one of you in your work. For blessed indeed are the peacemakers.